there are not one but two black holes at the centre of the Milky Way. But although NASA knows about black holes orbiting each other, I am the only person who can tell you this. I'm the only person in the world who can explain why. It is because of the Long Bang. Without me to tell you, you would not know. The secret history of the Milky Way is the secret history of the universe. It is the story of not a short, big bang, but a long, indeed a never-ending bang. More like a gong still sounding. Things are still accelerating throughout the universe. The universe itself is both expanding and imploding. Above all, it is the rate of acceleration that is reducing. The story of the Milky Way and the previously secret part played in that story by the Long Bang begins with the formation of a black hole. Twelve billion years ago, the Milky Way forms. At first, stars form only near to the black hole. Other galaxies also form, and one is on a collision course with the Milky Way. Here is where the Long Bang first shows itself. Not just moving, they are accelerating towards each other. Important to understand is that we are seeing something else happen here than would be described by mere movement. The first secret of our story is that the direction of the two black holes is different because the direction of acceleration under the long bang can be in opposition. It is not just outwards. The outcome of the collision is standard physics, reproducible on any billiards table. Momentum in two directions results in movement in a third direction. If and when the black holes fully meet, then the differences in direction of acceleration will be resolved in something like the way they are resolved by two cars colliding head on. But that is in the future of the Milky Way. At this point, the outer black hole's acceleration is pushing against the rotational direction of the inner black hole and away from the gravitational pull of the Milky Way. Like a motorbike skidding on tarmac, the outer black hole is being pulled forward even when pushing in the reverse direction. This is a stable configuration for the middle life of the Milky Way. With the acceleration from the outer black hole pushing against the rotation of the Milky Way, a very slow rotation begins for the outer black hole. At the same time, the buffer keeping the two black holes apart is very slowly being abraded in particular, the matter around the edge of the second black hole is being pulled turbulently into the matter at the edge of the Milky Way, giving rise to the creation of brand new suns. Over the next 10 billion years, as the second black hole oh so slowly spirals into the centre of the galaxy, Suns are being formed that are proportionate in age to their distance from the centre. Earth is formed about halfway through this middle period in the life of the Milky Way. The oldest suns are about 8 billion years old, whilst the youngest are only 1 or 2 billion. 
Of course, Earth is 4.5 billion years old. So for around 8 billion years, the second galaxy sacrifices its outer matter, a bit like an orange being slowly peeled bare. Around a billion years ago, the process finally completes. There's nothing left to keep the black holes apart. The Milky Way is about to enter into the mature stage of its life. Now it is time. Now I have to describe to you how the spiral arms of the Milky Way were created and how the bar at its centre came about. Let us start with this extract from the talk I have been giving since 2014. Acceleration has a very practical effect um, which we can apply in our own case. Let me give you three examples of, of, a, of a single scenario. The first example is where we have a black hole that is outside of a set of stars that are gravitationally linked. And this black hole is approaching on a collision course. Now if the black hole is moving very fast or is very heavy and therefore has a lot of impetus, it might strike a glancing blow on this, on this group of stars and then push on and push through and, and escape. That's scenario one. The black hole is not captured, but it does impel the group of stars, rearrange them, and it does continue onwards and is, is, is only partially gravitationally affected itself. Scenario two, a lighter, slower black hole is approaching this group of stars, and this time the group of stars arranges themselves around the black hole and the whole thing continues on its way as, the, as, a, as a single group. So that's scenario two where the black hole is fully captured as a result of its, as a result of its path into and through the stars, this group of stars. Neither of those is the situation that applies to us. We, we, i.e. with the Milky Way. In this scenario, we have, we have a third possibility, which is that the black hole is of a, a particular weight or speed that causes it to reach our group and then push on through, but our group arranges itself behind the black hole as it pushes through. And so this group of stars, which is gravitationally linked, just like the other, just like it was in the other two scenarios, is actually going to have a slowing effect on this black hole, just as this black hole has a sucking effect on the, on the group of stars. So it will end up, well, how will it end? In this diagram, we have a Mexican hat behind the, behind the three scenarios. The reason being that, as, as we probably all know, the Mexican hat is the typical model for the gravitational field of a body. And I thought, well, the closest I could get to a Mexican hat was this, it's actually an egg poacher. So you have to use your imaginations, but what, what we're saying is that if we imagine the black hole is, is, in the, is in the bottom of the cup, then what we're saying is that the stars pulling back on the black hole have the effect of squashing the top of the Mexican hat, like this. I've got, so what happens then? Well, even though these stars that are gravitationally linked are, um, are not solid, it's, like, it's more like a thick jelly than it is a solid, I think the same thing happens as if it was solid, which is that this, 
cup actually tears as a result of the downward pressure. So what happens is you get these arms coming out. And because the whole thing is rotating around, the arms actually curve. And so you get the spiral arms of the Milky Way and a typical spiral galaxy. Something else has been happening in this scenario of a black hole spiralling in from outside with a reverse acceleration that has not shown up visually in our reenactment of events. As the outer edges of two opposing gravity wells begin to meet, there is a neutral point formed between the two sources of gravity. Put simply, this is a bar of Lagrange points. A bar which falls across the region of influence of the two gravitational centres, but is still within the region of the gravity wells taken together. In other words, it is for visualisation purposes, like a skateboarding ramp that dips in the middle and rises at both ends, as well as along the narrow sides. When this region holds mostly gas, as it does during the approach of the outer black hole, it is not visually of great note, and we have not been concerned to animate it. Recall now that both galaxies have their very oldest suns at their centres, it is these old suns, now red dwarfs, those that have survived, which fall onto the bar and which then must inevitably go from a circular rotation, which we recognise from the planets, to the pendulum rise and fall we know just as well from the skateboarding park. We reach now the present. The Milky Way has the structure we have been describing. We have visualised it closely enough to explain why we believe that the only explanation that really makes sense is the long bang. We've described how acceleration from the long bang plays a key role in both the formation of spiral arms and in the creation of the central bar of the galaxy. We believe this is the simplest and the most complete explanation of what we see in space. However, we've created this visualisation entirely without concern for the mathematics of the Milky Way itself. The important thing was, could it be visualised? If it could, this becomes immediately the most likely explanation. Simulation using the correct maths will not prove it is right, nothing can do that, but it may prove it wrong, and that would be just as interesting. Andromeda is also a spiral barred galaxy with a second black hole at its centre. Whereas in the Milky Way, the second black hole now orbits at a distance of about 1.5 light years. In Andromeda, the distance is about 5 light years. Andromeda is due to collide with the Milky Way in about 5 billion years. This will then be the basis for a repeat of what happened 10 billion years ago, provided that Andromeda's acceleration is in the opposite direction to the Milky Way. You might think that surely you know what the direction of the acceleration is, but you do not. I don't either, but I can categorically tell you that there is a 50-50 chance of it being either the same or the opposite, since there's no in-between. The reason we do not know and cannot tell is because the universe has no background. In any two objects that we look at now, we should think of them as travelling on train tracks. 
Train tracks run in both directions. On Earth, you can tell which direction the train is going in by looking out the window. With no background, we cannot do that anywhere else in the universe. We simply cannot tell if one object is travelling inwards or outwards relative to the other until, of course, it happens. <laughs>